All righty. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Jesus loves you. So do we. The Lord has a word for you. And I just hope and I pray that you will receive it well. If you have a Bible, go ahead and open to John chapter 20. We'll start at verse 30. Um, luckily for you guys, we have New Testament Bibles. And this section of Scripture today is from John, so you'll be able to follow along. John is in the New Testament, end of the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, chapter 20, verse 30. We're going to start. See some of you guys, if you don't know where it is, there should be a t contents in the front. And it'll tell you where John starts. Look for the big number that says 2-0 and the small number that says 3-0. 20, 30. Is everybody there that wants to get there? Amen. Amen. This is the uh, opening scripture. Today's message is called See and Believe. And God's word says this in John 20, 30. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And by believing, you may have life in his name. Let us pray. Lord, you are good and you are great all the time and you love your people i ask that you use your servant and servants to touch your people father that they will receive something from you that they will leave different than they came that they will understand how much it is that you love them that you continuously send us here every tuesday come rain or shine to bring them the gospel of christ to give them an invitation to come to you and to receive your blessing of the food that you provide. Lord, so we thank you for these precious people. We thank you with words not of my own. Speak through me directly to each and every one of them a precise message that they can understand clearly. In Jesus' name, amen. So like I said, this one is called See and Believe. We're going to continue on further in the scripture there, but I'm going to ask you a question. Do we need to see Jesus to believe he existed? Let me ask you that again. Do we need to see Jesus to believe that he existed and walked this planet? The answer most of you are shaking your head is correct. No, we don't need. Listen, history books are filled with history. Things that happened in the past. The majority of those books are written by people that were either there or heard about someone that was there. The Bible is an account of the life of Jesus from people that walked with him, that actually saw the things that you are going to hear today and the things that you continually keep hearing as God sends people to preach to you, to talk to you, to help you, to help you to change your life. Not only should we believe because it happened, and it's history, we should also believe because this is the infallible Word of God. What does infallible mean? I have the definition here for you guys. Infallible means by the dictionary or Google, <laughs> says definition of infallible, it's an adjective, incapable of making mistakes or being wrong. That's the Bible, that's God. Doctors are not infallible, but God is. It also says, never failing, always effective, such as an infallible cure for a disease or a sickness or an ailment or some pain. It's infallible. It's infallible. That means that it cannot and it will not ever fail. So, I wanted to read with you something. I One of my favorite movies is Billy. It's the story of Billy Graham, go figure, as I like to preach. But... He had a mentor that taught him everything and used to take him on the road with him and put him in front of thousands and thousands of people. Well, Billy Graham started doing what his mentor would think to be better and it eventually screwed his mentor up. The guy that taught Billy Graham and messed his mind up. When you're teaching, it is every teacher's dream and wish that the student will do better than the teacher because that's a compliment to how well the teacher has been being taught. Well, Billy Graham's mentor turned away from the Lord, gave up his whole ministry, the whole church, and that really messed with Billy Graham's mind. And he said in the backyard of his childhood home, as he was deciding whether he was going to stick with the ministry or give it up like his mentor, his teacher, 
Can you imagine if Billy Graham listened to the devil and did not do what I'm about to read to you guys? How many people would be lost and how many souls would be burning in hell and how many lives would not be all that they are supposed to be? Listen to this. He said in the backyard of his childhood home at the stump where his father used to pray with his brothers. Listen, he says this. I hear you, Lord. It is by faith. And from this moment forward, I accept this word, the Bible, as your infallible word by faith, because that's what the Bible says by faith. Thank you, Lord. Faith, simply put, is forsaking all I trust Him, or forgetting all I trust Him. God's word says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord. So let's open up to... Back to John, and go back to verse 11. See and believe, we will actually... I just shared with you a story from Billy Graham at the time when he was about to change. There was actually a time in my life when I was about to give it up. I got out of prison. I was walking with the Lord, and I served the Lord in prison as an inmate with blue on in the church. And I was actually running the church, opening the church up and doing things for God. I wouldn't preach because I had a little, at the time I didn't know enough and I didn't feel comfortable preaching because I was also in the, in, in the blues. But at the time that I was in prison, my fiance at the time lost her kids for the last time and social services took the kids from her. She took a handful of pills, popped them in her mouth and never woke up. I thought that she was in a coma, but when I got home from prison on December 26th, a few days after Christmas Eve, I found out that they were protecting me from the fact that she did not wake up from that coma. They pulled the plug and she died. So when I got home, I didn't know that. I asked mom with my $200 of gate money from the state for my time that I spent, the years in prison, I got $200 and I went and bought this Bible, this very Bible. The cover is not the same because the cover was made of artificial leather and I used it so much that it fell apart. It only took me about a year and a half to make it fall apart. They reskinned it for me for free at the Lifeway bookstore. This is the new one and it's going to be trashed too shortly. Um, that day at my mom's house when she told me that my fiance died, it broke my heart. And not only did she pass away, but she also had someone else while I was in prison. That broke my heart. Bam, bam, two steps to the heart. I was done. I threw this Bible at my mother and said, F you to you, mom, and F you, God, and walked away. Straight up. I walked down the street and tried to call my drug dealer to get drugs. Thank God they didn't answer. I had no choice but eventually to walk back to mom's house, settle down, listen to some friends, what they had to say, then go to sleep. Before I went to sleep, I prayed and asked for some comfort. And the Lord told me, don't worry about her. She had someone that loved her. You weren't there. I took care of her while you were gone. I share that with you because this next scripture will show you some people that didn't believe. So moving on to chapter 20, verse 11. But Mary stood outside facing the tomb, crying as she was crying. This is after Jesus had been murdered and put on the cross. He said he would raise, he would be raised in three days. Mary was at his tomb crying. As she was crying, she stopped to look in the tomb. She saw two angels in white standing there. That's pretty awesome, two angels. I, I could only imagine what size they were, but it doesn't say that she was really scared, so I can't think that they are too big. At One at the head of the feet, and one at the head of the feet of where Jesus' body had been lying. So they said to her, woman, why are you crying? She says, because they have taken away my Lord, she told him. And then I don't know where they have put them. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there. Though she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus was standing there. She had walked with him. They had spent time together. Did not recognize him. Moving down. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. And she did not know it was him. Woman, he said to her, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Supposing he was the gardener. That's pretty funny that she thought he was the gardener. She replied, Sir, if you have removed him, tell me where you have put him, and I will take him away. Listen, Jesus said, Mary. 
turn around, he said to him, or she turned around, she said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Remember, we were talking about teachers. She called, Jesus called her by name. That's pretty awesome. The Lord knows your name, each and every single one of you. Don't cling to me, Jesus told her, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but to go to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced it to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what, she, what he had said to her. In the evening, on that first day of the week, the disciples were gathered together with the doors locked because they were in fear of the Jews. Then Jesus came, stood among them, and said to them, Peace to you. Having said this, she showed him the hands and his side, so that the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you have forgiven the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But listen to this. We are talking about doubt, not the being believing that God exists or believing that Jesus had been raised but one of the 12 Thomas called the 12 or called the twin was not with them when Jesus came so the other disciples kept telling him we have seen the Lord that's just like us we keep telling you guys we see the Lord we seen the Lord you guys can see the Lord in the food because the Lord provides all that food we don't he makes it happen every single week you can touch the Bible you can read the Bible. You can see the Lord. Watch this. But one of the twelve, he says, keep telling we have seen the Lord. But he said to him, if I do not see the mark of the nails in his hands, put my finger into the mark of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will never believe. Does that sound like some of us? We don't see, touch, feel. We can't see God. We always say we can't see him. What is he real? We question, we doubt. Watch this. I will not believe. After eight days, the disciples were indoors again, and Thomas with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and observe my hands. Reach out your hand and put them into my side. Do not be an unbeliever, but a believer. Thomas responded to him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. Those who have believed without seeing are blessed. Let me say that again. Those who believe without seeing are blessed. This is kind of a crappy picture. It's not so clean, but there is a picture of Jesus with the nail in his hand. And what we just read is where the saying, Doubting Thomas, comes from. Thomas said he wouldn't believe in Jesus, the Messiah, unless he saw and put his finger into the hole that was in his hands. And the Bible just told us that those that believe without seeing are blessed. That's us. That's you guys. We haven't seen the Lord and haven't walked with him, but we see the evidence that he was here when we read the evidence of the miracles that happened in the Bible. So what I'm saying to you guys, don't let the devil trick you. Don't let the devil beat you down and say, well, I've been trying this or I've been doing that or we prayed for this and we prayed for that and it's not happening yet. God answers every single prayer. God has what's best for you, but you have to believe. Don't give up and believe. Trust me. Like I said, you can see it in the Bible. You can see the food. You can see God every where we've seen it all even right here we've seen Don we prayed for that one girl that had tumors in her cancerous tumors she was healed no more tumors that happened right here in these tents pray boom tumors gone another girl just right outside here after one of the services here she had an abscess you know because we're junkies, we're alcoholics, we mess up, we do things we're not supposed to, we sin, we're not perfect, we're Christians, we do our best, but we recognize the sin, we repent, we turn from it, and we ask God to forgive us, he does, and we do better next time. That's all the Bible's about. It's not that hard, you can be a punk rocker, you can be this, you can be that, be it for Jesus. She had a big abscess on her arm, a big one, she was afraid she was going to lose her arm. We prayed, right over there, 
anointed it with oil, like the Bible says. And you know what happened? She came back the following week and said that night, the abscess went down. And when she showed me, it was about the size of a dime. Though, then we spoke to it again. We said, scar tissue, everything be gone. Skin go back to normal. And I'm sure you would probably did. So, and me and Don have seen blind eyes healed, deaf kids, even a girl. I'm going to keep telling you guys in Kenya, Africa, that had an epileptic seizure while we were visiting an orphanage. Can you imagine? We were in Kenya, Africa. We were sent by the Lord, supported by our friends. We're in Africa, visiting an orphanage to bless the place to pray. And a girl has an epileptic seizure and passes out and stops breathing right there on the second floor with the children around her crying. The pastor says, what can you guys do? Can you do something, pastors? What can you do? Me and Don, what else can we do? But believe God's word that I'm telling you, we've seen it happen before. We walk up to that girl. I grab her feet, the anointing oil. You went for her head. She was cold to the touch. She was already laying in a position like this with her hands like that. They had already put her in the position of death. The girls were crying. Their little girls about this big. People were wailing, just like we hear stories in the Bible. She was cold to the touch. We put anointing on her and we prayed a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, we're here. We don't believe it's by accident. We weren't even supposed to be here. We took a shortcut, traveled through the dangerous road, one of the most dangerous worlds in the world, to get there around landmines with gorillas waiting on the side, like, like, like I don't say gorillas, but men waiting on the side with machetes to pop our tires pull us out of the car and chop us to pieces and then take what we have. We drove through that road to get to this place on time to meet that girl. And we went up there and we prayed. And I kid you not, as we prayed, Lord, it's not an accident. We're here. We believe this is you. We don't know what we can do. There's no hospital that's close by. Please, Lord, heal her. Bring her back to life. Put breath in her mouth and raise her up. Did the Lord raise her up right that second? No. But watch this. Within seconds, we started to feel warmth come back into her body. Her chest started to go and breathe. And yeah, some of you are probably getting hit with the Holy Spirit just hearing about this. And then behind her eyelids, you could see movement starting to happen. Me and Don had to get going to the grounds because we were supposed to pray and check out what we were going to do the crusade on the weekend and you have to get home before dark when you're at a third world country otherwise you might die so we were trying to not be killed so we said pastor we believe she's healed give us a report and we just left did we have to believe yes. did we have to stand on god's word and believe that she was yes. healed did we think that she was Alive, we saw some evidence, but she could have stopped breathing, stopped whatever. Well, we had to believe, didn't we? we did. And we believed, and we didn't change our mind, and we didn't doubt God. And Sunday, this was on Friday, Sunday at the church, that same pastor that asked us to pray came back and said, as soon as you guys left, she stood up. She stood up. And she's back in school, and they said all she needed was a drink of water. With that, I say, let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for giving these people some evidence that you exist and that you love them. It's no coincidence that you're here, just like it was no coincidence that that girl was there and fell silent in Kenya, Africa. And it's no coincidence that some of you here might not know God, that might have just heard about Jesus for the first time, or maybe even heard about Jesus all your life, and you think or have thought, that it's not real, or those Christians are this, or those Christians are that, or the church hurt me here, or the church hurt me there, or this person was that, and they hurt me. Forget it all. Forget it all. Remember, Jesus loves you. Remember, Jesus doesn't want this for you. He wants more. He wants more. There's always more with the Lord. But you have to receive Him into your heart. So close your eyes, bow your heads. This is the moment that the Lord has made up until this point, all eternity time has stopped for you today. And the angels are waiting in heaven for you to receive him. Tomorrow is not promised. Remember that. The lies of the devil are real, but God is bigger. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand quickly while every head 
is bowed and every eye closed. If you do not know Jesus or you have not been walking right with him, I ask that you raise your hand right now and get it right with God. Get it right with God today. Thank you, Lord. Every eye closed and head bowed except for ones that are praying. Hands raised. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? Tomorrow's not promised. You can't escape heaven or hell. You can't escape heaven or hell. Make your choice for the Lord today. Lord, heal your children. These ones that have raised their hand, fill them up with your Holy Spirit. Fill them up, Lord. And the ones that do know you that aren't walking right, we ask that you set them on straight. And you fill them all up, Lord, and save them. And those that did raise their hand, and everybody that's listening, I ask that you say this with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for saving me thank from you. hell. Thank you for saving me. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me by the blood of Christ. From this moment forward, I am a believer and I will walk in the power and the authority that the Bible speaks of. And we thank you for giving your son and giving us a way to get to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen.